Humanity has explored Mars since 1960, and we've never been closer. The next logical step for Mars exploration is permanent settlement, where crews that go to Mars stay and build a new society. Though this may seem like science fiction, it is actually closer to reality than you think. Today, we will uncover the plan to colonize Mars. Welcome to Tech Archives. Why colonize Mars in the first place? Mars. It's a pretty unforgiving place. On this dry, desiccated world, the average surface temperature is negative 67 degrees Fahrenheit, and at the poles, the temperatures can reach as low as negative 243 degrees Fahrenheit. Much of that has to do with its thin atmosphere, which is too thin to retain heat, not to mention oxygen. So why then is the idea of colonizing Mars so intriguing to us? There are many interesting similarities between Earth and Mars that make it a viable option for colonization. For starters, Mars and Earth have very similar lengths of days and axial tilt. This means it has the same basic seasonal patterns as our planet and will make it easier to adjust to. Additionally, Mars is closer to Earth than the other solar planets, which would make the process of colonizing it easier. In fact, every few years when the Earth and Mars are closest to each other, the distance varies, making certain launch windows ideal for sending colonists. Mars has vast reserves of water in the form of ice. Most of its water ice is located in the polar regions, but surveys of Martian meteorites have suggested that much of it may also be locked away beneath the surface. This water could be extracted and purified for human consumption easily enough. Preliminary experiments have shown that Mars soil could be baked into bricks to create protective structures, which would reduce the amount of material that needs to be shipped to the surface. Earth plants could eventually be grown on Mars soil too, assuming they get enough sunlight and carbon dioxide. Over time, planting on the native soil could also help to create a breathable atmosphere. Elon Musk's plan. That's the spirit with which he founded SpaceX in 2002. Musk was frustrated that NASA wasn't doing more to get people to the red planet, and concerned that a backup plan for humanity wasn't being developed for when Earth becomes an uninhabitable wasteland due to asteroids, pollution, or World War III. Since then, SpaceX has developed several impressive aerospace systems. Falcon 1, its first orbital rocket, Grasshopper, a small self-landing test rocket, Falcon 9, a reusable orbital class launcher, Dragon, a spaceship for cargo and soon NASA astronauts, and Falcon Heavy, a super heavy lift launcher. But Mars is a cold, unforgiving, and almost airless rock located an average of 140 million miles from Earth. Astounding ingenuity is required to land an even small spacecraft there today let alone a giant spaceship full of people and cargo in the future. That's why SpaceX is taking the lessons the company has learned and its increasing amount of money and staff and using them to build a space vehicle called the Big Falcon Rocket, or BFR. The fully reusable 387-foot tall system consists of two giant stages, a roughly 18-story tall Big Falcon spaceship and a similarly huge Big Falcon booster. The booster will launch the spaceship on top towards space, then land itself for reuse. Musk has said the BFR's spaceship is the hardest part of the system to get right, so that's where SpaceX is focusing most of its energy. Musk has said his aspirational timeline has 2022 as the date for the launch of the first Big Falcon spaceship missions to Mars. Mars and Earth get close enough to each other about once every two years, creating windows of time when it's quicker to reach the planet. Because of that, the best months to launch would be the summer of 2022. Depending on how efficiently the Big Falcon spaceship can change its speed, it could take anywhere from a few months to nearly a year to reach Mars. Thus, a landing in late 2022 or early 2023 is likely. Musk wants the first spaceships to be full of cargo and machines that future missions would require. That stuff would be needed for humans to build facilities that can generate power, gather water, bottle up the thin Martian air and turn those raw resources into methane fuel and oxygen for return launches back to Earth. Musk also introduced the world to SpaceX's first space tourist hopeful, Yusaku Meizawa, a Japanese billionaire who is to be the first passenger aboard the BFR. Meizawa purchased all the seats on the vehicle's spaceship and plans to pick six to eight artists from a variety of disciplines to take the roughly week-long trip around the moon with him in 2023. As with the first uncrewed missions to Mars, it could take perhaps six to nine months for crewed ships to reach the red planet. The first spaceships would most likely serve as homes for astronauts. It wouldn't be the most comfortable setup, but it might reduce mission complexity by eliminating the need 
to immediately build Mars habitats. Mars Base Alpha will be the name of the first permanent Martian base and is set to be built by 2028. From that point on, Musk said a colony could begin to form. It would start off building just the most elementary infrastructure, just a base to create some propellant, a power station, blast domes in which to grow crops, all of the sort of fundamentals without which you cannot survive. This timeline has been speculative from the start, but at this point, the milestones start bordering on fantasy. Many life support experts doubt that necessary technologies will be ready for people to land on Mars and survive there in the 2020s let alone build a permanent city for colonization shortly thereafter. Yet this is precisely what Musk aims to do, build a backup drive for humanity on the red planet. Saying, quote, I hope people start to think of it as a real goal to which we should aspire, to establish a civilization on Mars. This is not just about humanity, it's about all the life that we care about. Musk envisions sending about 1 million people to Mars at about $200,000 per one-way ticket. He believes that price will be possible given the reusability of the BFR. SpaceX's website hosts an image of a rusty red planet morphing into an Earth-like world. The illustration is a nod to a hypothetical and speculative process called terraforming. Terraforming is a type of climate change, but deliberate and more rapid than what's happening on Earth right now. The idea is that Mars could be terraformed into a warm, wet world, one better suited for permanent human colonization if we could melt the planet's carbon dioxide rich ice caps. Musk even said nuking Mars might help. Challenges Despite the aforementioned benefits, there are also some rather monumental challenges to colonizing the red planet. For starters, there is the matter of the average surface temperature, which is anything but hospitable. While temperatures around the equator at midday can reach a balmy 20 degrees Celsius, at the Curiosity site, the Gale Crater, which is close to the equator, Typical nighttime temperatures range as low as negative 70 degrees Celsius. The gravity on Mars is also about 40% of what we experience on Earth, which would make adjusting to it quite difficult. According to a NASA report, the effects of zero gravity on the human body are quite profound, with a loss of up to 5% muscle mass a week and 1% of bone density a month. Naturally, these losses would be lower on the surface of Mars, where there is at least some gravity but permanent settlers would still have to contend with the problems of muscle degeneration and osteoporosis in the long run. And then there's the atmosphere, which is unbreathable. About 95% of the planet's atmosphere is carbon dioxide, which means that in addition to producing breathable air for their habitats, settlers would also not be able to go outside without a pressure suit and bottled oxygen. Mars also has no global magnetic field comparable to Earth's geomagnetic field. Combined with a thin atmosphere, this means that a significant amount of ionizing radiation is able to reach the Martian surface. In fact, a recent paper submitted by a group of MIT researchers, which analyzed the Mars One plan to colonize the planet, concluded that the first astronaut would suffocate after 68 days, while the others would die from a combination of starvation, dehydration, or incineration in an oxygen-rich atmosphere. In short, the challenges to creating a permanent settlement on Mars are numerous, but not necessarily insurmountable. And if we do decide as individuals and as a species that Mars is to become a second home for humanity, we will no doubt find creative ways to address them all. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos like this.